What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about holding companies, parenting companies, or what some people call management companies. What is the first thing? What is a holding company? A holding company, by definition, is a company that is set up to manage, operate, and control other companies. And I want to go ahead about talking about this from my experience, talking about this from my business enterprises. When I first got into business, I did not set up a holding company. I just set up one company and I ran the upscale garage sale through that company. I ran the eBay stuff through that company. I ran the Amazon stuff through that company and I ran everything that I did through that company using that company's name, LLC, EIN. And because everything was counter related, the Craigslist, the eBay, the Amazon stuff, that was all counter related. But today I would do it so much differently. But at the time I set up my business, I was completely unaware of the power and the privilege of setting up a holding company. Now, I'm gonna just kind of walk you through the process because I became aware of holding companies. Literally, I started one, two, three, four. My fourth company is when I became aware of setting up holding companies and using our holding companies. I would say this was about 2010, 10, 10 ish. And holding companies can be extremely powerful depending upon how you use the holding company. And I'm going to say it like this let's just say that you are a financially aware, financially astute person. And you just go ahead and set up a holding companies and you set up your operating companies. And depending upon how you do that, you could not potentially realize the true benefit of setting up a holding company, a management company, a parenting company, because this is how it works. And I'm going to explain it to you like this. Setting up an LLC, you could go to many websites and just enter your name, LLC, and really just go ahead and create an LLC, get yourself an EIN, go ahead and get yourself a business checking account, and you have a legit legal business. However, here are the problems and the consequences of not setting up your LLC correctly. And this seriously impacts setting up a holding company. If you don't know what you're doing when you're setting up your LLC, you could create problems in the future because you just set up an LLC. You just found the name, got your EIN, opened up a business checking account, and there was no thought process to the future. And many entrepreneurs have set up LLCs and later on found out that they were gonna run into problems in the future. The same thing is possible when you set up a holding company. Let's walk you through my process. 2010, I became aware of holding companies. And at this point, I was in a more digital distribution stage of my business life. I remember meeting a guy in all places, Waffle House. Yes, Waffle House. And he told me about the powers of holding companies. And this is what he told me. They're a holding company that only exists to put signs on buildings. Like when you're driving around your town and you look at a tall building and you'll see MetLife or you may see Geico or Coca-Cola on that building. Here's something you may not know. When you put a sign on a commercial building, you can theoretically increase the price of rent because it has a sign on it and it's become a nomenclature type business. Yes, this is true. So there are companies, holding companies just set up to go from city to enter into deals with number one, company A, the company that wants to put their sign on the building, company B, the company that owns the building. Do you understand there are many buildings that have a sign on the building, Truist, SunTrust, Truist, SunTrust, Truist is a merger of SunTrust and BB&T. 
and they literally have their signs all over the place. Here's some that you don't know. You may see a building that will have like Truist on it, right? And Truist may only occupy one to three floors. And this could be a 20, 30, 40, 50 story building. But because that building has a name on it, you could get more money in terms of rent. And there are companies, this is all they do is go around looking for tall buildings to put names on. And that is telling you, once you understand business, once you understand the true methodologies of business, it just opens up into a super wide cavern. And that's just one little thing. And this guy was telling me, Med and Waffle House, we were eating, we just talked about business. And that was one of the things that he was doing. He was literally going around looking for buildings to put signs on. And these are multi-million dollar deals because company A, who wants to put their sign on the building, has to pay to put their sign on the building. And it could be a big lump sum or it could be a monthly fee. It's quite interesting. I just tell you that because would you ever thought there was a business of literally going around to put signage on a building. That is a business model. Once I got hip to it, and also let's talk about who's eligible to set up a holding company. If this is your first business, I would say maybe you're not appropriately set up to create a holding company. If this is your very first business, I would give you two categories here. Number one, you're a regular person. You want to start a business. You go ahead, you start your business. You get your LLC, you get your EIN, you get your business checking account. You get your business credit card. You may not be at the stage in business where you can set up a holding company. And let's go to option number two. Option number two, you're an extremely well paid person. You make 150, 250,000 a year. You have plenty of disposable income and you are an astute person you're really intelligent and you're not just going to start a business to start a business you're going to start a business with a lot of investigation intelligence due diligence you might be in the position to set up a holding company first and then set up your operating company second it just really depends on where you are and how much money you have to invest in your business. And like I said, one of the things that I'm doing here and you should subscribe, you should hit the bell notification and you should watch these videos three to four times because real business training is very different than a lot of other stuff that's online. It just depends upon which camp that you're in because starting businesses takes money. And I will say something just to be a hundred percent transparent and clear. I've never started a business with a credit card, a line of credit, or a loan. All of the businesses I have started have been started with organic funding, money that I already had on hand from running and building businesses. So with a holding company, once you understand the setup, because you know, literally anyone, and it's not that much money to set up a holding company. It's not that much at all. It's just, you could have a holding company that's an LLC. You can have a holding company that's a partnership. You can have a holding company that's a C Corp. It just really depends on what you're trying to do and what your goals are and your aims. Like I would say for the average person, 90 something percent of the people who are starting companies, an LLC will work. However, let's say you have a really big ideal and you want to go ahead and set up a company and you want to sell shares of those companies to future investors, automatically you're setting up a C corporation automatically. So it just really depends upon your intentions, the things you're trying to do, the things you're trying to work around. But now that you know what a holding company is, let me inform you how to set it up and how to activate it to save money in business and to save money with your taxes. Because once again, if you just go ahead, go online, read some information, this is how you set up a holding company and you just do that, you could 
potentially put yourself in a position where you're gonna miss out on the primary benefits of a holding company. Johnson, you've heard of that. It's a holding company. Berkshire Hathaway, you've heard of that. It's a holding company. One of the things that you have to do is go in with a clear mindset. I will give you an example of a holding company set up that one of my friends has set up. He went ahead and he got into real estate. And that was the basis of his master company, his parent company, his holding company. And then he got into some other businesses. Now, if you understand business law and tax law, you normally would not set up a holding company for a real estate empire because you would neglect and you would just pay too much in taxes if you're starting off from real estate. But however, he has a real estate company, he has a automotive company, and he has an e-com. And because he has that automotive company and the e-com, that's how he takes a salary for his holding company, which is an S-corp. Now, since he has an S-corp, part of setting up an S-corp is you must pay yourself a salary as well as take your money in distributions. Because he is a sophisticated, financially astute, very financially aware person, he takes his income from his automotive company and his e-company, e-com company. And the money that comes in from real estate, he takes as distributions every quarter of the year. And so because he understands the power of setting up a holding company, because once again, real estate is extremely powerful for tax re reduction because he pays virtually no taxes on his real estate holdings using the deductions and all the allowances the IRS allows as a real estate investor. However, those allowances with the real estate, they do offset and diminish his returns from his automotive company and his e-company, but there's still taxes that have to be paid because of those companies. This is really interesting because we were talking and he got off in the real estate, but he found out that the e-com and the automotive companies made way more money, much faster with less capital investment. So that's one of the reasons that he stuck with those companies because I would say based upon what I know, his company is 70% e-com, 20% automotive, and 10% real estate because he makes more money from these other businesses than he does from real estate. Now, real estate can make you a lot of money if you're set up right, you have the right mindset, and he just set it up as an S-corp, and he's, once again, it's a beautiful setup. He gets all of the tax benefits because of the way that he runs his company. Now, here's something that's gonna be shocking. His, e, his real estate makes money, his e-commerce business makes money, but his automotive company, it doesn't make money. And I know you're going, why would you set up a company that doesn't make money? The real estate and the automotive companies dramatically reduce the taxes that he pays on the e-commerce company. I would say they reduced the taxes by 75 to 80%, which is huge. And for the money that it costs to run the automotive company, it's like nothing. So he understands that you can have three, four companies and the companies that are not making money will offset the companies that are making money from a tax standpoint. It's a very powerful situation once you understand it and once you're at that level, because just like me, he started a real estate company many years ago. He got into some other stuff and he met someone really, really astute who's you should set up a holding company before you go any further. And one of the things that you have to understand about holding companies, how you run the holding company will determine your tax benefits and your cost and savings. Because one of the things that he does he uses this automotive company. He drives a very nice car that's in the company's name. And the car is 100% used for business. And that saves him an incredible amount of money from a tax standpoint. It's something that I'm doing. If you were unaware, my Porsche is in the name of the company. And later on this year, I'm gonna buy a Porsche SUV that's also gonna be in the name of the company. And that's going to give me 
about $150,000. Essentially, I would be able to write off the price of the Porsche once I get it. And with my car, I can write off 20% a year for the next five years. But my car was extremely expensive. So that's going to be $50,000 a year plus with the Porsche SUV. So the first year, cause I can only write off that Porsche once because the Porsche is over the 6,000 pounds. So I can, with bonus depreciation, I can write off that whole purchase price the first year that I get it. Now, once again, you have to be careful. If I, just to, some additional information, let's say I have the Porsche which is in my business name and I write it off the first year. I'm cool. Now, if I sell that Porsche the second year, I can no longer write it off, right? So let's say I write off the Porsche SUV and then next year I sell it. Guess what? I'm in a position where I owe the internal revenue service money. Yes, when you have assets that you're depreciating and numbers and stuff, if I was to write that off in 2023 and then in 2024, I sold that Porsche, I would owe the Internal Revenue Service money. So you have to be really careful. So if I'm going to buy this Porsche SUV, I need to keep it five years before selling. Otherwise, I'll put myself in a position where I owe the Internal Revenue Service money. And once again, when you start getting into holding company gain, holding company taxes, it's an elaborate setup. And these are things that the Internal Revenue Service would be very aware of and they can come back and get you. So just be aware. But a holding company is a beautiful concept if you're ready for it. If you're not ready for it, once again, you start your business, your business has been running for three or four years and at that point you systemized it, you automated it, you got it set up a certain way, and now you want to set up a holding company, you have the wherewithal and the mental acuity to set up a holding company. Now, I'm gonna get this question quite a bit. Glendon, I'm gonna get this question quite a bit. Glendon, I already have an established holding, I already have an established LLC, I pay taxes on it, I'm making money, and you're talking about creating a holding company. How would I create a holding company and then get my company into that holding company. Great question. I'm about to answer you. What you would do is pay taxes, let's say 2023. You would pay taxes for 2022, and then you would put, you would create a new holding company. And then you would just literally, depending on where you set your LLCs up, you would just go in and do what's called an administrative change. You would update the existing company with new ownership being the holding company. Now, this is one of the things I would do. I would just transfer ownership and I sell the company for a dollar. Why would I do that? Because you don't want to get into a situation where, oh, I sold this company for a million dollars because that's going to come back to you. So you're just doing what's called an administrative change, an administrative update with your LLC. You're just going in, taking your name off as the owner of the LLC. And another thing that you have to do, when you change ownership, even if it's still, you have to get a new EIN. Yes, I know it's crazy, but this is one of the things. So those are the two things you would go ahead, let's say three, create the new holding company, and then go in and assign ownership of the existing business to the brand new holding company. It will be a fee, 30, 40, $50, whatever your state charges to make this administrative change. And you would do it at the beginning of the new year so you can then file taxes at the holding company level for your new operation and then create multiple companies. Now, one of the things that I find to be very interesting with this is I'm in the position where I'll explain. A few years ago, I started a car rental business, which was a complete nightmare. And all I did was just go in, create a new LLC and add it to my holding company change. And because I was already set up for payroll and other stuff from other companies, it made it super simple, super easy to set up this company 
and it was just a complete disaster. One of the companies I used was a company by the name of Hirecar, which recently filed bankruptcy because the business is just terrible. But once again, I was able to slide into a new business and literally slide out without messing up my existing business structure, without having to go sit down with a CPA or anything, because I was already, a holding company gives you a business system that you can buy and sell and put new businesses in. I'll be doing more videos talking about the significant power in the establishment of a holding company. It's an extremely powerful thing. It's a beautiful thing that you can set up just depending upon who you are, your financial situation. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to subscribe to the channel. I want you to update the little bell for all. And I want you to watch these videos three to four times so you can get this business information to help you be successful in your business. And also, I got some free, not free, I got some paid training that's gonna be coming up. So at some point I should have a little list directing you to my email page so you could be made aware of this new training that is coming to help you be successful in business. My name is Glendon Cameron. Hopefully you enjoyed it and thanks for coming to watch this video.